Before 2016 comes to a close and before I head back into the handheld Sonic marathon, let's take a quick little sidestep back into the Shantae series. Another successfully funded Kickstarter project. I wonder how long I can go without mentioning money number fuck. No, but seriously, I was looking forward to this. I think Way Forward has proven time and time again that they're competent game developers. The Shantae series being one of their most iconic franchises, if not the most iconic. But if you recall from my earlier Shantae video, I didn't exactly hold high praise for the original game. Risky's Revenge was better built but lacking in content. It was the third game, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, where I think Way Forward really hit the nail on the head. And even now I highly recommend it as a fun, fast-paced 2D action adventure game. But a large part of my praise for Pirate's Curse was the absence of one of Shantae's most defining aspects, her ability to transform into animals by dancing. Now to be fair, this was only a huge problem in the first game, because by Risky's Revenge they simplified the process by a huge margin so that you weren't stopping for 4 seconds every 4 seconds. It's just that the pirate equipment in Pirate's Curse as a means of progression was just so fucking fun to use, and I knew heading into Half Genie Hero as a backer of the Kickstarter campaign that the game was going back to the animal transformations for upgrades and all that. So the most I can hope for is something built as solid as Risky's Revenge with hopefully a little more content packed in this time. But well, what's the end result? Am I pleased as a backer? Is it worth your time and money if you haven't gotten the game yet? Let's find out now. I feel compelled to start with the presentation and sound, Half Genie Hero is just a fucking gorgeous 2D game. The character models I feel are the highest point, like unless the game is intentionally going for a pixel look, which I don't mind at all to be clear, this should be the standard for high definition 2D sprites, not just in looks, but in fluidity as well. The backgrounds are mostly 3D, but their cartoonish qualities do a fine enough job blending in with the environment, overall making sequin land, however small it may be, something to behold. And that goes for the music as well, there's not as much here as Pirate's Curse, but what is here is still catchy as shit and energetic to make the journey come alive. I'm glad to have this soundtrack on my media player. Jake Kaufman does it once again. But let me elaborate on my earlier comment over sequin land size, which I think requires a brief plot summary, but don't worry, it won't take too long. One night, a mysterious voice warns the half-sleeping hero that the genie realm faces grave danger and that Shantae must stay alert for the coming darkness. It's pretty vague, leaving Shantae to ponder, but the next day, Scuttletown once again finds itself under attack by Risky Boots and her army of Tinkerbats. A few hair whips later, and Shantae sends Risky packing, saving the day, and as thanks, the mayor hands Shantae another goddamn pink slip. Termination, because the mayor believes Shantae isn't really doing her job if Scuttletown keeps getting attacked. What an asshole! Shantae is then immediately replaced with Holly Lingerbean, another supposed half genie that's a total bitch, and that's about all she's worth. To help Shantae get her job back, Uncle Mimic plans on building a defense mechanism called the Dynamo to help keep nasty threats from Scuttletown for good, but it requires many components that Shantae must travel across Sequin Land to obtain. And this is where Half Genie Hero becomes less about the overarching story, because there really isn't one, to more of a series of microplots. Very tiny microplots, not including Scuttletown as the central hub. There are only five major areas in Sequin Land. I'm tempted to say four and a half because Hitno Baron's Castle is barely what I call full level. But every one of these worlds, I guess you can call them, has their own individual story that's not really tied to the main plot, except for the encounter with Holly and Tasseltown that's so inconsequential at the end of the day, I don't even know why they bothered, honestly. In fact, all the plot threads are quite similar. The writing's great, once again on point with character interaction. Half Genie Hero is oozing with humor, but every chapter can be summed up as Techno Baron's being a dick, Holly's being a dick, Ammo Baron's being a dick, Hypno Baron's being a dick, and hey, Squid Baron is back, and now he's being a dick too. It's very Monster of the Week, almost a rehash of Risky's Revenge. I think I'm gonna hammer that point repeatedly throughout this video, where Half Genie Hero feels like Risky's Revenge 2.0 for different reasons. The lack of a real story would probably be reason one, I suppose. Reason two would be the return of the transformations to help Shantae in adventuring. And I'll give Half Genie Hero credit, while still not as fast and fluid as the pirate gear from the last game, transforming is still remarkably quick, and there's a healthy amount of transformations to unlock, from the returning monkey, elephant, and harpy forms, to the mermaid, the spider, a new crab form, and there's even a few novelty transformations. I suppose that's one way of looking at them, like the gem pot that slowly but surely gives you infinite money, and a blobfish that exists solely for the purpose of looking goofy when you bounce off enemies' heads with it. There's a great number of forms, but unless it's the monkey, elephant, or harpy, they're underutilized. You use most of them one or two times to get a heart container or something of the sort and put them on the shelf for life with no other means of utility. Mainly the spider, and especially the mouse form. What is this shit? Trophy fodder, that's what. The existence of both the crab and mermaid forms feels a bit redundant, like I think there could have been a compromise between the two for underwater travel without being separate entities. 
I would say the best out of the optional forms is the bat, but best in a sense that it can completely break platforming sequences in half and you get it very early on in the game. But it doesn't take much to break half genie hero, you have to actually try to make this game difficult. A lot of staple power ups from previously make the return in the shop from pike balls, fireballs and storm puffs, but what were previously one use items in pirates curse like the bubble are now full out reusable magic spells in half genie hero. And since magic is so easy to refill, you neuter half of the challenge just by having this thing and you can upgrade it to full out invincibility later on. Now that eats up your magic to balance it out, but through enough exploring, Half Genie Hero grants you infinite magic to abuse to hell and back with no regrets. I was honestly shocked when I got that upgrade. Reason 3 for the Risky's Revenge comparison? The utter lack of dungeons, but Half Genie Hero takes it a step beyond. You see, Risky's Revenge was lacking because it only had about 2 dungeons. Half Genie Hero eliminates them entirely. This game is structured very much like a Mega Man title. Don't think about it, don't think about it, oh, I thought about it! Areas in Sequin Land are not connected, they are completely separated with a bonafide start and conclusion. It's more about the platforming in Half Genie Hero, the kind of jumps you can make, the kind of obstacles you overcome, your effectiveness in dealing with enemies, with no real puzzle solving of any nature. And on one hand, I'm glad this is something Half Genie Hero remains consistent with from the get-go, instead of yanking my chain and Risky's revenge. On the other hand, dungeons have been a staple since the original game, and to see them completely omitted here, it feels odd. The stages are pretty fun, it doesn't break new ground in anything, at least within the Shantae series. It still has that great sense of energy, the soundtrack contributing to that factor, I can assure you that I want to dance my ass off to some of these tunes. But I wouldn't say the game is as kinetic as Pirate's Curse. In fact, I'll just go and say now, I still think Pirate's Curse is the better game. And my major reasoning is reason number four for the Risky's Revenge comparison. There's not much here content wise. Compared to Pirate's Curse, I should stress that. Let me elaborate. Half Genie Hero is and feels like a bigger game than Risky's Revenge, hence Risky's Revenge 2.0, which I think is important. But the minimalistic story with plot threads that go absolutely nowhere or feel underdeveloped, the below average difficulty, only five major areas that lack dungeons, which leads to an enormous amount of backtracking when hunting for collectibles and upgrades, Half Genie Hero, I honestly feel, is a step backwards in content compared to Pirate's Curse, borderline incomplete in small portions. I'm talking primarily about the base game, the content you're paying 20 bucks for up front. If we're being technical, extremely technical, Half Genie Hero is an incomplete game because additional content like Risky Mo, which supposedly plays like Pirate's Curse, along with extra costumes and other things have yet to be released. As a backer of this game, I can look forward to this future content free of charge and I really can't wait for Risky Mode. But late adopters not only have to pay the base price, but also additional money for later content. I was initially hesitant to review this game because of that, because I knew more was on the way. I wanted to see if Half Genie Hero would eventually become worth its asking price. But then I thought of other crowdfunder projects like Shovel Knight, which I reviewed before the free Plague of Shadows expansion, and way before the Spectre Knight expansion, and I did that because on its own I thought Shovel Knight was very much worth it, and don't get me wrong, Half Genie Hero is fine, it's not a bad game at all. It looks and sounds great, very accessible to new players, I see no problem starting this series with this title. Indeed, on the Shantae Totem Pole, this ranks below Pirate's Curse, but above Risky's Revenge in the original Shantae. When accounting for the many other great games out there that cost less, I just don't think it's worth 20 bucks right now until later down the road when maybe all the DLC is released and we get a Half Genie Hero Director's Cut. I not only think Pirate's Curse is still the better game, and that's also cheaper too, currently on sale for 10 bucks at the time of this video. But you know what though? I gotta give props to Way4 for a successful Kickstarter campaign. Communication was abundant, the updates were always a treat to see in my inbox, I really felt as an investor of this product, I was satisfied with the creation process. And though the end result may be a bit lacking for me, it's a structurally sound, bright and colorful, and most importantly, stable, video game. And as a backer, I know there's more to look forward to down the road, and I don't have to pay a single goddamn penny for it. You do, though, if you didn't back it, but that's why I say wait for a price drop. Comcept, this is the only time I'll openly rib you, I swear. Take some fucking notes. And same for you, Koji Igarashi, though I still have high hopes with Bloodstain, I'm not even gonna fucking pretend I'm not looking forward to that. And there we go. Half GD Hero is good just not at its full potential yet. Definitely something I plan on revisiting later when everything for it is released. I should also head back to Shovel Knight when all the DLC for that game is released too. Something to look forward to. I seriously need to start considering revamping my old then and now concept. Well, that's the end of 2016 for this channel. 2017 begins with the rest of the Sonic handheld marathon, and the next video is not the advanced series, and no, a lot of you are waiting for me to just jump into those, but I like to look at the next game as a sort of precursor to those games. What I mean we'll find out in the next video. With all that said, thank you all for watching, have yourselves a fantastic new year, and take care.